It's time now to complete the shortlist phase. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find your data for each of the six criteria in this phase. Then I'll show you where and how to log your results in the spreadsheet. This step is key as your product score depends on the accurate scoring of each of the criteria. I'll go through each one step by step so that you know with complete certainty that you're doing this correctly when you start logging your own results. Once I've done that, I'll show you where to find your league table on the tab in the spreadsheet and then how to move your most promising opportunities into the select phase. So let's jump over to Amazon and get started. Here we are in the Amazon Product Research Google Sheet. This is where I showed you how to enter your products in the search phase. These are the products that we ascertained are viable using the BSRs and the item specifics to avoid. We had all the items that you entered into the search phase tab of the sheet will be displayed in the shortlist phase tab of the sheet. To make it easier to go back to Amazon and find the item, you move your mouse over the URL here in the column called listing. You will see when you hover the mouse for a few seconds, a box pops up with an arrow on the right side that you can click and a new tab will automatically open and you'll be taken to that particular Amazon product listing. The first thing we wanna work out is what type of seller is selling this product. We wanna look and see where it ships from and who it is sold by. In this particular instance, this is ships from and sold by Amazon. So we go back to our spreadsheet and we select sold by Amazon. Then we find out how many reviews this product has. So we go back to the listing and we can see this product has 3,010 reviews. So we go back to the sheet and enter and we select from the drop down 500 plus. Now we're going to look at the artistic side of the product listing. The seller type and the reviews are very scientific, but the listing quality means we are judging the art of the listing. So we go back to the Amazon listing. The first thing we want to look at here is the title. We can see that it is not stuffed full of keywords. It does explain what the product is. So I would judge the title is present and I would give that one point. We can see that images are high resolution and we can zoom in. We can see multiple images showing the product features with some close-ups, so I score that one point. The bullet points are descriptive, they're not overstuffed. They are multiple lines, however, they are strong because they point out the features and benefits of buying the product. So I'll score one point here. So we have three points so far. Now let's scroll down to the product description. As you can see, this is sold by Amazon, so the content here is enhanced and will definitely score one point with the beautiful pictures. So I will score a four for this listing, which is perfect. Now, is the product in the $7 to $30 price range? Yes, it is. It is $7.68. So we select from the drop down seven to 30. Now, is the product isolated? In this particular instance, the product is isolated. They are only selling the hose product itself. There are no bonus items being sold here. There is nothing here that increases the value of this particular offer. There is no bag or extra connection to this product, so it is isolated. We mark on the sheet in the dropdown that this is an isolated product. The next thing is brand equity. The first thing we're gonna look at is the number of products that this brand Flexzilla has listed on Amazon for sale. So we click on the link for Flexzilla. This will tell us how many products this particular brand has. So what we can do here is enter Flexzilla in the search box and click enter. We see Flexzilla only has 128 products here. So this one does not score a point for the number of products inside the Amazon platform. The other thing we're going to look for in terms of brand equity is we're going to look for the Flexzilla website. We're going to see if they have international distribution. So we can see here Flexzilla and we can find their website. So now that we find ourselves over at the Flexzilla website, we want to try and find out whether they supply their products internationally. Do they have a presence in other countries? Generally, we are going to see where to buy or international policies or information like that in the website. However, it doesn't appear to be something that they do here. They do not sell internationally, so we would not score for this particular element of brand equity. They would not get a point here. The final element is to look and see, do they sell in a hypermarket or a supermarket? So 
to do this, we can go to one of the major supermarket websites and try to find out if this particular brand is being sold here. So we can see that this particular brand is being sold, and so it scores a point for being sold in a supermarket or hypermarket. Now it only scores one out of three, so this does not qualify as a brand, big brand. So we can come back into the spreadsheet and select this is not a big brand. As soon as you enter all the details in the six fields, you will have a score out of 14 for your product. And you can see for this particular product, it scores a nine and the color is red. For a product to qualify for the next phase, it would need to score at least a 10 and the color would be green.